Learning web design has been a super fun and challenging journey for me, but frankly, it has taken me a lot longer than it needed to. I got stuck in tutorial hell a lot, and there were times where I was just spinning my wheels, wondering what I should do next. Well, now that I've become more skilled at it, I've reflected on my journey to this point, and there are definitely some critical things that I would do differently. So in this video, I'm gonna cover seven steps that I would take if I had to learn web design all over again from scratch. So these steps will allow you to not only learn web design quickly, but also in a very functional project-oriented way. So the first step is something that I would do throughout your entire journey, which is to document your journey and share your work on social media. So this is something that I've done since the very beginning, and I can't recommend it enough because it has led to different inbound opportunities to work with other people, to collaborate with other people. It also has allowed me to just get to know other people in the design community. So I've been able to chat with other people who are designers, and I just, I may have not had that opportunity had I not been so consistent with posting on social media. And aside from that, you also get to build an audience. So as you become more consistent and you start sharing your work more often, you're going to get people that resonate with your message, as well as people who want to embark on a similar journey that you are. And I know for me, that is just really cool to see, but it also adds to the accountability. So me kind of like staying on track with continuing to improve and get better. And then as far as getting started, I mean, that could just be a whole other video in itself, but uh, there's several ways you can do it. If you're into long form video, then you can pursue something like YouTube, which is my preference. I have a bias towards YouTube, uh, but you can also do short form video. So you can do TikTok, IG Reels, and YouTube Shorts. If you're more into sharing your work visually, you can do something like Behance, Dribble, or even Instagram. Or if you're more into sharing like short written updates, um, you can do something like X or more longer form written content like Medium and do a blog sort of a thing. So there's a lot of different avenues that you could take, but the one thing that I'll caution you is to not pick too many of these, just pick one form, whether it's video, written, uh, or visual, and just stick with that. All right, step number two is learn design software. And the primary software that most designers use is Figma, so I would recommend learning that. And there's a lot of different ways that you can learn this. So what I would recommend doing if you wanna do this for free is just find a crash course on YouTube and just work through that crash course. Or sometimes people will even have full-fledged Figma courses on YouTube. And what I would do is just go through that and you'll learn the UI, but more importantly, try to find a crash course that incorporates a project. So something that where you're actually building out um, some sort of design within Figma, because then you'll be able to approach it in a more functional way. If you want to opt for a paid approach, which can save more time and you'll learn things more efficiently sometimes, then uh, you can do, well, what I did was I took the Figma masterclass from Midsco. He's a popular designer on YouTube. I loved the course, but I understand that it can be a little expensive. So if that's too expensive, then you can do something like Udemy. And I know there's plenty of Figma courses on there that you can learn. And Udemy has a sale every week, basically, for 70, 80% off their courses. So just wait for that, and then you can get a Figma course for $20, $30 or something like that. But again, with the paid courses, just make sure that you are picking a course that incorporates you actually like building something, whether it's an app or a website, something where you're actually doing something functional within Figma. The third step is to recreate a popular landing page in Figma. So once you learn the ropes of Figma, it's time to just dive in and start working on a project. And I really like the aspect of recreating a popular landing page because it not only gets you practice with learning Figma, but it also gives you practice with, what, with certain design principles that big companies use to structure their web pages. So you'll get insight into what kinds of typography companies use. You get to learn the colors that they use, uh, the overall just structure of the landing page itself, the spacing. 
you get to learn a lot when you just recreate a uh, landing page from a popular company as opposed to trying to recreate something from Dribbble or something where it's just visually looks nice, but it may not be functional. So I recommend doing that. And like at this step, you're probably not gonna feel like you know enough to do this. And this is where I messed up because instead of just biting the bullet and just trying to do this work of, of recreating a landing page, I decided to go into tutorial hell and just watch a bunch of tutorials on a bunch of nonsense that I didn't need to know. And so if there's one thing, one thing that tutorials will not teach you is the ability to critical think. And this is arguably the most important factor when it comes to being a web designer is your ability to problem solve. And so by just diving in and figuring out how to recreate a web page, you are naturally going to run into obstacles and you are going to have to critical think your way out of these problems. And then if you can't do it on your own, then that's where you can seek external help using uh, Google or YouTube or whatever. So when you're doing this, just a couple like uh, nitpicky things, I would say at this point, it, using auto layout is optional. So auto layout just kind of make thing, makes, makes things more developer ready um, if you're not familiar with that. And I would say like that's probably optional at this point. Um, I think the main thing that you should grasp with this is just really the design principles that a popular landing page is using. Because uh, later on, we'll talk about softwares where you are kind of more learning the development aspect. So for now, just focus on the design, recreate the landing page on Figma. And then one thing that you can use to help is a Chrome extension called Show Me the Styles. And this is a really neat extension that allows you to look at the CSS styles of a certain web page. So you can see what, typo what typography they use, the entire color palette that the website uses, or the landing page rather. But what's neat is that you can also download all of the assets from the website. So if you really want to recreate a one-to-one -one replica of a landing page, you can have all of the assets so that you can do exactly that. So highly recommend that, it's free. And then the other thing is I would recommend building a mobile version of this website or this landing page as well. So either narrow up your browser so you can see the mobile version and then recreate that as well so you can see the differences with what a desktop design looks like versus a mobile design. Step number four is to create a landing page that sounds fun. So once you've recreated a popular landing page and you've got a sense for just typical design principles that companies use, then it's time to create a landing page on your own. And the important thing is to make it fun. So there shouldn't be something that you feel like you have to do or something that you feel like you should do to I don't know, impress an employer or something. Because if you just always try to design things to impress other people, you're going to burn out and it's not going to be fun. So design something that you're actually interested in. So if you are into fitness, then maybe mock up a landing page design for a personal training service or a gym. Uh, if you're into music, then you could design a landing page for a a record label or a recording studio. Make it something that you're interested in and you'll learn a lot more and just stick with it better. Uh, so with this, really what you wanna do is once you pick a project that you wanna work on, you wanna get inspiration from other examples. So if we stick with, uh, let's say the gym example, if you wanna make a landing page for a gym, then just look at other landing pages for uh, either gyms in your area or national chains of gyms and just sort of uh, you can use a Chrome extension called go full page and you can just essentially print out the entire uh, JPEG of the web page and you can kind of look at it see what the structure is and when you compare different examples you can kind of like pick what you like from each website and sort of like mash it together in what you think would be a good design for your fictitious gym. And this is a neat concept because aside from just working on web design, you're also building other skills such as branding because you can go so far as making a, making a logo for this 
fictitious gym if you want or whatever uh, project you're working on. But you're also gonna have to work on copywriting so because you're gonna have to fill this landing page with copy. But the main thing is don't overthink this because if this is the first project that you're working on where you're building something on your own, it's very easy to have this imposter syndrome of, oh, I'm not good enough, like my design sucks, and I want it, and but I really want it to be perfect. And just just don't overthink it. Like, if this is your first project, it is unreasonable to be good at this point. Uh, like it wouldn't make sense for you to be skillful if you've never designed a landing page before. So give yourself some per, give yourself permission for this to truthfully kind of suck because what you're trying to do is just build reps, build reps. Again, we're practicing the critical thinking muscle by just problem solving our way through this, even if it's not perfect, because as you do more projects, it'll just get better and better over time. But don't fall in the tutorial hell, just, just jump right in and work on it and uh, design a project in Figma. And again, you want this to be, uh, ideally you should design a desktop mock-up as well as a mobile mock-up so you can practice the different design variations for each screen size. Number five is learn a no-code development tool. So now that you've gotten some practice with making mock-ups in Figma, we need a tool to make those live on the internet. And so the two primary tools are Webflow and Framer. There's other ones as well, but those are kind of like the two big ones at the moment. Webflow is a steeper learning curve uh, because it's targeted more towards developers. So when you first open it up and look at the, uh, look at the UI, it's gonna be very overwhelming. Uh, but the benefit of it is that you get to learn the underpinnings on how websites work because you essentially are going to be learning HTML and CSS through the interface of uh, Webflow's uh, interface. Uh, versus Framer is definitely more targeted towards designers and the interface looks very much like Figma anyway. So it kind of just depends on your goals. Like if you want to learn the inner workings on how websites work, and that's certainly the uh, audience that I fall into, then Webflow is definitely for you, and that's what I enjoy learning personally. But if you're someone that just wants to focus on the designs and get, get them live on the internet, then Framer is probably going to be more your choice. But whichever one you pick, just like with Figma, there's going to be free and paid options to learning either of these tools. So for free, I know for Webflow, they have a Webflow University, which is free to take. It's a wonderful course. They have a Webflow 101 course that I took, and it goes over the software really well within the context of making a landing page. Framer also, I believe, has a crash course on their website that you can take. And again, it allows you to learn the framer software within the context of building a landing page. If you want to go the paid route, there's a lot of different options. I know for me, I took the Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass. It is expensive, but uh, I will say it gave me a really good uh, in-depth under understanding of Webflow. And because Webflow is more development heavy, I felt like I needed that. They do have a course for Framer as well, but I heard that it's maybe not Great, I kind of heard mixed reviews about it. So take that as you will. Uh, you can also go to the Udemy approach and find a cheap course there. Again, $20, $30 if you wait for a sale, which happens almost every week. But either way, just pick one course. So don't go diving into multiple courses. I probably did too many courses, to be honest. Just pick one, get a very rough understanding, and then we move on to step number six. Number six is to recreate a popular website in your no-code development tool. So this is the same thing that you did in number three when you recreated a website and mocked it up in Figma. But what I would do is I would pick a different landing page so that you can just get more exposure to different ways that people structure their website. And so with this, you're not gonna be mocking up the design in Figma first because the design's already there. You have the final website that you're recreating. But what you want to do is just take that design and you just want to replicate it onto either Webflow or Framer 
and you can use that same tool I talked about, show me the styles, where you can look at the CSS and see the different typography, colors, spacing, all of that, download the assets, and that will help you along. But I would do that, and this will be difficult because Figma, you can just drag things freeform on the canvas, but you can't do that with Webflow. You can with Framer, but again, if you wanna make it live, you do have to use I don't use Framer, so I, I don't know their verbiage, but either you do have to use Flexbox in order to make things work. So it'll give you a chance to um, have to work within the constraints of the no-code development tool, and so that makes things a little bit difficult. And then I challenge you with this landing page to also make it responsive. And so this, this will be your project, and again, you're not gonna feel like you know enough if this is your first time making something on your own in either Webflow or Framer. But again, I urge you, just stick with it. Just, it's supposed to feel hard. You're supposed to feel like you don't know enough, but just really try to problem solve. And if you can't figure something out, then that's when you can look up how to do something. And that's really the best way to uh, just become a better designer. Number seven, develop the landing page that you mocked up in step number four. So whatever project you picked to mock up in Figma, so if it was the gym example or whatever you happen to pick, you're gonna develop that in either Webflow or Framer. And so your goal is to make that responsive for all the different screen sizes. So for Webflow, that's gonna be for desktop, tablet, mobile, uh, mobile, what am I trying to say? Landscape, and then mobile portrait, and then Framer, I think there's three default screen sizes that you develop for. But in any case, you're gonna work on that because that's usually the steps that you would take to work on a project anyway, is you would mock up a design in Figma, and then you develop it in either Webflow or Framer. And as with all these steps, you're going to run into roadblocks, you're going to run into obstacles, you're not gonna feel like you know enough. Again, it's all part of the process. Just keep pushing through uh, because you will learn a ton by, do, by doing this. After you do these steps, it's really a matter of working on more projects and sharing your work. So pick a project, which could be your own personal website, a fictitious business, or you can make a website for a company or brand that doesn't have one. And then from there, get inspiration from other designs, mock up your designs in Figma, and then develop it in either Webflow or Framer. Ideally, each project should add something different and more complex. That could be advanced design animations or interactions, more complex functionality like a CMS or third-party integration, or incorporating some custom code. But more importantly, each project should be something that you're interested in, otherwise you're gonna burn out and lose interest. These are, these are the steps that I wish I followed when starting out learning web design, and I think that if you approach it this way, you're gonna cut your learning time in half and open the door for potential paid opportunities. Now, quick plug, if you like long form video and you wanna start and launch a YouTube channel but you aren't sure how, I have a community called Creator Launchpad that helps you to do that. There are a lot of other awesome YouTubers in there that you can connect with and I share everything I learned along my journey with YouTube. It's lifetime free access for the first 100 members and then anyone that joins after that, there'll be a small monthly fee. So there's a link below if you're interested. Subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.